Good morning, everybody, uh, and Happy New Year to you all. Uh, welcome back to What Kate Made um, and our winter decor demonstration today. Now, this side, time of year is always a little bit of a downer. Um, I don't know what you think, but, uh, you know, the cold weather, the dark days, the letdown after Christmas is always going to be a bit of a dark time. So cheer your house up with some lovely winter decor because you've always got a gap left after all your Christmas decorations come down. Your house looks completely bare. So I'm going to show you a few ideas of things to do over the next couple of sessions. Um, the first one, we're going to concentrate on lighting and candles and different ways to display candles because it's really important to have that warm. In Scandinavia, uh, you all have heard of Huga, the, the Danish concept of coziness. Um, and that relies in the winter on a lot of lights, like candles and different lights. But also, we, we took a trip to Norway a few years back um, to see the Northern Lights, which were spectacular. But travelling through the towns and villages on the way, every house had candles in the window. And our guide explained to us that it was a purely practical reason that in days gone by, if there was a blizzard and you were going out to your barn to see to your animals, the light would guide you back to your house and you wouldn't wander wander endlessly in the, in the blizzard. So it's nice to have candles in the window. So that's something that I like to do post-Christmas. So I'm going to show you um, a couple of things today. If you follow my page, you'll have seen that I was practising last night. And one of them's worked out really well, and one of them hasn't, and I suspected it wouldn't. But I've, I've discovered an alternative that I'm going to show you. So let's start, first of all, with the sweater jar, which is the one that you saw on um, on the advert for this session. So this is my sweater jar. And you, you can see it's got beautiful cable. It's a nice cabled sweater. I got this at a charity shop, so it is recycled. This is the bottom of the sleeve, so you've got a nice cuff. And I've decorated it with um, some recycled buttons. I keep loads of buttons. I'll cut them off everything. Um, the jar inside is quite a tall one. Um, so with mine, I'm not going to put a candle in it because it's quite a dense pattern. If you've got more of a lacy jumper, your light would show through, but the light isn't going to show through so much in this one. So what I've decided to do with this is use it as a vase instead. So I have gathered together a few bits and pieces to put in it. Again, to give it the Nordic feel. Now these teasels were given to me before Christmas to use um, over in my Christmas displays and I never used them because they're very spiky and there was a lot of them. I did use some, but these, some of these are sprayed. So that one's silver and some are gold and there's a few copper ones in there. So I thought I would put these in my uh, bars. I'm going to show you this a bit better in a minute. I know you can only see the teasels at the moment, can't see that. So I've got the sprayed teasels in my bars, and I've also made uh, these pom-poms. i put them on the stick, and these are tiny little pom-poms. Pom-poms are going to feature in the next one, that the next um, session that I do, but I thought I'd, I started to make them in advance. I'm going to need a lot. But, oh, they'll look nice in there as well. So that's going to be my winter vase. And you can see that I have got my pom-poms. I might put some more pom-poms. They just add a little bit of um, softness to it because the teasels are very spiky. Ow. So that is what I'm going to do with mine. But as I say, if you have a lacy, a more lacy open work jumper, then you can um, use use it as a candle holder, sorry. You'll need to forgive me, I've got a terrible cold. It's not COVID, I've tested three times and I'm negative. So um, you'll need to forgive me if I'm a bit, seem a bit slow because my brain is just full of cold. Um, I'm just gonna say a few hellos because I, I can actually see your um, comments today. So hello to Jane, hi. Uh, Donna, Rosemary, Rosemary's always here. And uh, Julie, good morning everybody. Now, I don't know where you are, I'm in um, the northwest near Blackpool, and it was snowing, but it stopped now. Um, so I don't know what sort of weather you've got, but wherever you are, it's definitely going to be cold. Right, let's get started with this jar. So what you're going to need is a big jar. Um, 
these are moonshine jars. My son loves this product and sort of flavoured alcohol product called moonshine. They're quite nice jars. They look quite like a um, mason jar. There is still a bit of glue on these, but as we're covering it up, I wouldn't worry. If you've got a more open work sweater, as I said, you might want to get all the glue off. But I struggled with this, so I thought, no, I'm going to cover it up, so I'm going to leave it. That's the jar. This is the sleeve of the jumper. And I measured it against my jam because you don't want it to come all the way. You want it to come to about there when when it's when the cuff's folded down. So, I mean, it's up to you what you do. You can either cut it quite long and then trim it back. But the only thing I would say is if you are going to use it as a candle holder, don't cover the base of the jar with jumper because it can make it a bit wobbly and you don't want it to fall over when it's got a candle in it, unless you're using an electric candle. So... What I did was measure the length of my jumper and cut it off at the bottom. And then I have zigzagged on my sewing machine. I don't know if you can see that, but I've zigzag stitched around it to stop it fraying. If you don't have zigzag stitch, you can use, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can use clear nail varnish or PVA glue and that'll seal the ends as well. So this is the simplest thing ever. Um, I'm going to turn your camera down so you can see what I'm doing. But, you know, we'll be done in two seconds. Just bear with me. So there's my jar and there's my sweater. I'm simply going to put my sweater over my jar. And I'm trying to get you in. I think I might need to tilt you up a little bit more on this one. But there we go. So I'm going to pull the jar down, it, the sweater down the jar. It's sticking a little bit to the glue that's already on the jar, but don't worry about that. So when I fold that, that's the position I want it now, because when I fold that cuff over, you can see, you can just see the top of the jar. So what you do at the bottom is you want to glue it uh, round the bottom of the jar there and stick that in. Now, we, mine, when you zigzag uh, stretch materials like this, it, it will um, spread out like this. There's not, not a lot you can do. If, perhaps if you used a walking foot, anybody will, it might not do it so much, but it doesn't matter because it, Kind of adds to the charm, and we're gonna um, glue it on. Um, oh, hello to Joe as well. Is that France? I bet it's not snowing in the south of France. You're lucky. <laughs> so anyway, let's get on with the glue. So glue gun, trusty glue gun. Oh, I'm gonna talk to you about something else later as well. I was thinking, seeing who got, if anybody got um, crafty things for Christmas. I'll show you what I got. Yeah, but everybody's got these. It's a stand for my glue gun. Look at that. We can't see it now. Uh, just stop it dripping all over the table. And I'm also going to use, because I always burn my fingers, I'm going to use a pencil to stick. Now I'm up talking, my glue's there. To stick rather than my fingers. I'm always finding that I do use my fingers and then with um, things like this that aren't solid, it comes through and burns me. So I'm just going all the way around with the glue and just easing the sweater up, trying to not get it too gathered and sticking it. Oh, put a bit more glue in there. Sticking it as close to the edge. It doesn't stop. I see. I don't learn. Here's another glue stick. I, I'm very generous with my glue. Last bit. Not quite enough left in that. Just bear with me, I'll put another stick in. So I'm going to be using on um, my second jar. I'm not going to be using my glue gun. Normally, my glue gun is my best friend and I use it for everything, but Today I'm only using it for the first, the first, uh, this first session. Um, good morning to Dawn from Birmingham. What's the weather doing down there? Oh, now that's nice. Julie got a Mickey Mouse crochet set and a crochet hooks in a case with needles, stitch markers, tape, and tape measures. That's a lovely gift. I, I remember getting, I got a set of crochet hooks in a nice zipped up case about, um, oh God, it must be eight years ago now. And 
um, I've, I've used them ever since. They're, they're brilliant. So, so I'll stop talking about crochet and get on with this. So there we go. That's your your um, basic jar. So decide which is the nice. See, I've got I've got the seam of the sweater there, so I'm going to make that the back. Okay, so I'm going to stick my buttons on this side. I mean, you can tidy it up a little bit more. These little where it's it's um, puckered out a little bit. I will tidy it up later. So you can use any buttons you like. Um, you can use. You know, wooden buttons are nice. It depends on your sweater, of course. You want to contrast them to the colour of your sweater so they show up. And you want to... Um, pretty ones. I mean, it depends. Mine's quite a masculine, chunky sweater. Um, it was... I did buy it at a charity shop. It was, it, it was second hand. Now, I've picked out... Um, can you see... Oops, can you see these? These are like a horn button. I've got lots of these. I collect buttons. People give me buttons. <laughs> Sometimes I'll get up and there'll be a box of buttons on the doorstep. People are getting rid of them. And you know that thing where they're always kept in, like, biscuit tins? Yeah, I've got loads of those. So what I'm going to do is I always put the top one and the bottom one on. Um, I think I'm, yeah, I put the top one on the cuff because my jar, because my buttons are quite big and my jar is, is not massive. Um, so I'm going to put one on the top and then one on the bottom and then put the other one in between. So that to me, that makes sense. And I'm going to glue them on. I'm not stitching them on. I'm going to put the glue on the button and then put it in the middle without putting my fingers over the holes because the glue will come out. Let me see that one there. And we'll put this one on the bottom. And that helps us get the third one right in the middle. I'm sorry for sniffing. When I got up this morning, my eye was stuck shut as well, and I thought, oh, I've got conjunctivitis. Um, and it was very red, but it's got better now. So there we go. There's our camp. Now, how easy was that? That's taken us five minutes, if five minutes. Um, it's going to be a short session if we were just doing this. Um, but I've got some, another another couple of things to show you. So that's our first vase. So I think that is quite Huga. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's very strange pronunciation. You might know it better as Higgy, H-Y-G-G-E. So then, again, I could use that as a bar. I could put my um, teasels in it. It doesn't have to be teasels. It could be any kind of dried seed head or, you know, the pom-poms are great. could make a lot of pom-poms and put them on on branches. Um, somewhere I've got... An electric tea light. I was going to show you, but it might not be bright enough. This because my jumper is quite thick. Can you see that's an electric one? So it's glittering, it's glowing away. Then it's got the switch on the bottom. I'll drop it in and see if we can see anything. You can just about see it. Um, I wouldn't recommend a big candle in this because um, it's uh, as I say. It's, it's, I mean, it is a glass jar, so I would stick with the tea light um, if you're going to put them in these. So that's the first one done. So I'm going to pop that to one side, and I'm going to show you the second one. So with the, with the caveat that I said earlier, that it didn't work very well. So what I was trying to do was create a, a crystal snow jar. So I made a star-shaped... Um, template and stuck it on with the idea that it would and then you use epsom salt or dead sea salt to create this crystallized effect now i did this last night and it looked lovely um but what i suspected would happen overnight did happen in that the pva glue which i used drew out the the, the moisture out the salt or the salt drew the moisture out the glue or whatever so as you can see it hasn't set so when i touch it it just moves. So that wasn't a very good idea. I did try this one and spraying it with some clear um, enamel varnish, but that didn't work either. So what I've come up with instead is fake snow. Now, if you um, followed me before, you know I have a thing about plastic. I try to minimize the use of plastic as much as I can. That salt's all sticking to my thumbs now. 
Um, but in this case, I'm going to go with it just because I want to show you this one. Um, I suspect any sort of salt will have the same effect. Um, so maybe, I don't know. I don't know what's the, what the answer is. But it does still look quite nice and sort of crystally. And I decided that this shape I did to this star shape was a bit big. I need to do it smaller. The lights inside there, I'm going to show you in a moment. We'll come back to them. So what you need is a jar. So this is a smaller jar. And again, because we're going to cover it, I haven't scrubbed and scrubbed to get all the last bits of glue up. Mm. This time I'm going to use a heart template and I'm going to use a much smaller one. Now, if you followed me before, um, there's always been odd templates on that I've put up for different things. I do have a lot of templates. I, I, I cut them out of card uh, so that they're durable so I can reuse them over and over again. Um, star templates I think I put on at Christmas and various other things, but I will try and put them back up on my own page so that we can, um, you can see them there. Caroline Stewart suggesting using spray mount instead of PVA. That would work, I think. Uh, I don't have any spray mount. I would have tried that. I didn't know whether they, um, whether the enamel spray I've got would do it, but I didn't have time to test it out this morning. Uh, biodegradable glitter, that's a really good idea. I've used biodegradable glitter quite a lot. That was Julie, but it is, it is expensive. Right. So let's get back to this one. So what I've got here is um it's like sticky back plastic but this, this we use this we use this it's a frosted one we used it to you on the panels of our bathroom door so i've got that's the bit i've got left um i've cut it out a little bit it's got a paper backing so you can draw on it with your for your template uh where's my little heart on there so i'm going to draw around my little heart template and cut it out now you could put more than one on. You could put look, a whole series of hearts all the way around. Um, but today, for ease, I'm just going to do the one heart. Now, all these that I'm making um, as demos and showing you are all going on my heart. Because my heart looks very, very bare now it's not covered in reindeer. And the other thing, a slightly sad note, um, my dog, which you may have heard on my broadcast banking, passed away just just after New Year, which is sad for us, but in the past I've never been able to put candles on my on my hearth because he's a bit bouncy, or he was a bit bouncy, and there could have been a fire, but no, now I can't. So sad, but you know. Right, so that's my little heart. I'm going to peel the back off it and stick it on my jar, and I want to choose a clear bit of my jar, not a bit where there's... Um, any lines or any of the um, paste glue left over. So I'm sticking it in the middle. Can you see? So now what will happen is when I paint the glue on, there won't be any glue on that bit. So that will stay free of the sticky stuff. Um, I'm just going to put some, oops, some tissue down because I will need to catch me. Um, snow as after I sprinkle it over. So I've got a little bit of PVA glue there. Um, I've got paintbrush. This is one I always use for glue, so it's a bit, you know, scraggy. And you just, I'm going to start where the um, template is and just, this isn't watered down, this is like straight PVA. Just brush over that to start with, making sure I get it all covered. Pop that to one side and then I'm going to take my fake snow and sprinkle it on before it dries. I mean it won't dry straight away. It takes a while to dry the easy here, but so you're just gonna to have to bear with me and hope this this actually works because as I say I used the salt last night. Well that looks pretty good to me. Right so you carry on gluing all the way around then just hold it in your hand so that you're not um touching the tissue. With it, the other thing you could do, of course, is maybe you make um get a flat tray, a foil tray or a plastic tray, and fill it full of put your snow in it and roll it like roll it like that. That would also help you pick up the bits that um you've spilled, but that that hasn't worked very well. So I'm just going to carry on just um doing it by hand. 
Where's that go? There isn't a lot going onto the onto the tissue. But, and with the glue, I mean, if you get snow on your glue brush, it doesn't really matter because you're going to cover it anyway. It was harder with the salt, I have to say. So, did anybody else get crafty things for Christmas? I got a new webcam, tried to use it today. But until I get my son, you know, from February, we'll be having much better um, broadcast sports. Until I get my new broadband, which you can't do till the end of January. The webcam, although it's good, isn't going to make any difference if my internet connection is not better. So you'll be pleased to hear, those of you who've not had a very good signal, that it should be better um, after January. I've got one more winter day car session booked in, and then I'm doing a... Um, Valentine's one. So by the time the Valentine's one comes around, I should be up and running with my new internet. So you can see now my whole jar's covered. I'm gonna just just bear with me while oh, I've got glue on that now. While I try and get this back into the jar. In fact, what I'm gonna do is stick it onto the one underneath and put it to one side. Because I got glue on that one. And that should go back into where it's not one knock. Should go back into that little bag. There we go. The snow's turned to rain now, so it's raining on me. Right. Put the glue away so that I don't inadvertently stick stick myself to something. Right, so now's the tricky bit is peeling off your heart, which has disappeared underneath, and I can't see it now, underneath the jar. From the inside. Do you know what? That's worked so well. There it is. And you see it's virtual, virtually invisible. Right, so now I'm going to try and peel it off. Last night it peeled off really easy. And tonight, today it's not going to. It doesn't matter if your fingers slide over the... Um, you don't, you just want to peel it off without disturbing the outside edge. But there you go, you see. Um, and that's it. Now we just wait for the glue to dry, and you can then, if you've kept the lid, if you're putting an electric um electric lights in it, if you've kept the lid, you can put the lid back on. Um, I'm going to go back to this one that I made, and I'm going to just grab it and turn the lid because I want to show you the. I was going to have to go back into the um washing up to get rid of all that glue because I will want to use the jar. So um, Adrienne got an embroidery set with two sizes of rings and lots of embroidery. Well, that'd be nice. I do like embroidery. So these are a copper wire fairy light, uh, a string light. And they come with a little, the battery operated, and they come with a little switch like that on the end. Now that fits perfectly inside this size of jar. I mean, this isn't the lid for this one, but... Um, it's for the other jar. So I've used these in summer for um, outside lights hanging up in it, like a macrame um, plant, plant hanger, if you like. So I'm just going to show you what these would look like all lit up. Um, I don't want to go in there. I mean, the jar, the jar lid is too big, but I'm going to try and hold it. And they're flickering a little bit because, oh, which way do I go? That way. So you can see it does give a nice effect with your jar. You can see your little heart shining through. I'll just try it with that electric tea light I showed you earlier as well. And we'll see what that looks like. So that kind of flickers as well. That's pretty too. Keep turning things the wrong way. Right, so um, once you, your glue's dried, I would leave that now for an hour in somewhere warm so the glue dries. You can then decorate it with bits and pieces. So I would just decorate it probably around here because you don't want to cover your heart. Um, a little bit of gold cord. That looks quite pretty. I've also got some uh, cream macrame cord. That's quite nice. That's stretchy as well. 
and some very thin um, cotton yarn. So maybe what I would do is put a length of macrame and the gold cord together. And then I'm going to, where my heart is, so I'll turn it so my heart at the front. And then take them round and cross them over like that. Can you see? And I might put some of the other string on as well. And then I would just glue that there. Um, but I don't want to touch that too much because it's not dry yet. So that that was one way to decorate it. So we've now got this and we've got our vase or candle to go on our heart. So I'm really pleased with those. Those are two really nice things. Very simple to make. Very few um, tools needed. Very little equipment needed. Um, sugar might work with those because sugar doesn't draw moisture out of things. But... Whatever you use, if you use something, I would then give it a spray with clear uh, clear enamel. Um, this is my mine, and I use this if I do if I paint rocks or anything like that. I always give them a um, a spray with that to just just to keep them, them safe. Now I've started to struggle with my cold a bit now, so just bear with me while I take a little drink. I've got peppermint tea, which I recommend if you've got a cold. It clears your you know it's quite well. Um, right, so I've got another couple to show you, but I'm just going to show you and quickly explain how, how I made them because just because I've run out of um, materials when I made these yesterday. So this one is a um, votive glass. So it's just, it is a candle holder. could just be a tumbler. It could be anything. It could be a small jar, but there's glass underneath there. Um, they were on my side last night, so they've got a burnt out tea light. This is, these are cinnamon sticks. They're just glue gunned all the way around so, and above the, the glass, so you can't see the glass inside. Um, these are um, crafting cinnamon sticks that I got to put in my Christmas decorations. They're not, um, they're not sort of the culinary ones. Um, also there on the front, these are a couple of orange slices. I had lots of these dried orange slices to help decorate at Christmas. I like to make a garland that's got cinnamon sticks and orange slices on and put it on my fireplace because it warms up and you get the smell. And this is is similar. Um, when you warm it up, it really smells gorgeous. I've got, I took a little bit of video last night of it um, on my shelf in the living room, on my bookshelf. And the light shines out between the um, cinnamon sticks and gives like a, a corona effect. I'm going to put it on my, my, my page, my facebook page so you go and have a look at it um and see what you think so that is one idea and that does that's lovely because that smells as well so anything that's got a scent is always part of you hoogie hoogie i wish i could pronounce that properly um to create the atmosphere of coziness that you're looking for at this time of year and the last one i'm going to show you it, again it's got a tea light in it because i used it last night this is simply again it's a jar same size as the one we used for the snowy, snowy heart jar. I have um, I've loads of lace. Again, yeah, I reclaim lace from anything that I've got. So I've wrapped the jar in lace and just glue gunned it on at the back there. Then I've wrapped it with some of that macrame cord. And then I made this little um, lace flower. It's simply a, a strip lace. It was lace ribbon, so it was about an inch wide. I just ran a gather stitch along the bottom edge of it. This is about a foot, about 12 inches long. And then you pull the gather and secure it. And it automatically sort of coils itself up and you just coil it to make a flower. And then I've just sewn in the middle um, this nice gold, that's wooden beads, again, recycled beads. So you've got this very pretty sort of air crew, vintage looking candle holder. Um, it, Again, I videoed it last night. Um, I'm going to, I can't remember where I put that electric, oh, the electric one's still in the other one. So, yeah, um, either you can use real tea lights. I use real tea lights because I like the effect. So you can use um, LED candles. I had a smash, a beautiful LED candle right in the middle of um, my table centre. If you remember, we made a table centre in the last session for Christmas. And I decided I'd, I'd got this LED candle. I must have bought it last year in the sales after Christmas. 
and put it in the middle because my um, centerpiece had paper and felt in it. Um, and it looked lovely. It was just looked real. Um, again, I videoed this one last night. So after this broadcast is finished, I'll put the little video on just so you can see what it looked like when it's when it's lit and it's shining. Um, so, so that is the first part of our winter decor um, sessions. I think the next one is next Thursday, but it'll come up on the um, virtual village hall feed. I'm going to just turn you back up because you are to, I'm really talking to you. Um, so, uh, I hope you liked all those ideas. Next week, next session is about making pom poms and using pom poms to create. Well, I'm going to do a wreath. Um, I, I, I've got quite into my wreaths this year, and I like them hanging on my front door. I have a porch, so I can hang on the front door, if you like, the inner door. I can hang a nice wreath um, made from felt or fabric or whatever, but it won't get wet. Um, so um, I'm going to use use pom-poms to make a wreath. I'm going to use them in sort of neutral colours, the very Gandhi vibe to it. And I'll also show you how I made the um, these little pom poms on a stick that you can put in a vase. Um, so that's next time. So if you're going to come along next time, you'll need your pom pom maker or card circles and lots of wool in different um, neutral shades. Really good pom poms for using up those last little bits. Um, I'm going to make them in various sizes. Show you a few tips and tricks. So that'll be next time. Um, but thank you for coming along today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for everybody's comments. And it's nice that I can actually see them at this time. Um, so um, Rosemary's commented that uh, it would be nice for patio tables, etc., in the garden. That's exactly what we did. Um, my sister-in-law, who isn't a crafty person, but likes to do something when she comes, we made little um, knotted string, almost like a string bag. Um, she, she's a big fan of Rosie's. I shouldn't say that advertising, Rosie's Lime Marmalade. And the jars are quite cute and she saves them. So she brought six of these down and we made the little string hangers and we, we hung them in the garden. And she she took, when she took them home, she had hung them from all our patio um, hanging things. And they were beautiful with those, with these light things, these um, string lights. They look, I think they look like fireflies. I might have a video of that. I could post that to show you later. But anyway, check out my page. Um, there's loads and loads of different ideas on there. Um, you can you can have a think about anything else you want to do. Um, join me again next time for the winter wreath, which will be really nice. Just one last thing. Can you see my, my tree, the twig tree that I made for my very first broadcast with um, VVH? I did an Easter tree. Now, it's, it's, it's coming useful, my tree, all through the last few broadcasts. It's just got its Christmas lights on it now. It's about to get mini pom-poms all over it in, in Scandi colours to become a winter tree. And then it's going to move through the seasons back to, back to Easter again. So um, that's my tree at the moment. But you will see that next time. It'll look different. I'm wittering now. So um, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, have a nice January. Uh, hope the weather's okay for you. Stop snowing here now. It is cold. Um, I hope next time I'm better. I'm going to go now and take a hot toddy to bed because I'm I'm done in now. It's not COVID. I have tested. <laughs> um, so I am running away at the mouth now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.